Welcome back to another episode of the Watch Me Wholesale Show. The way this works is we randomly choose a market, then we find a distressed property, we run the numbers and look up what our offer price is gonna be, and then call and make an offer. All of that and more, coming up. This video is brought to you by Flipster, the nation's number one real estate software with tools for finding, funding, and flipping houses. Check it out now at getflipster.com. If you're new here, I'm Jerry Norton, and I went from dead broke to millionaire flipping houses, and I created this channel after doing a thousand deals to help you master the art of wholesaling and flipping real estate so you can live your dream life. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified when new videos are released. Okay, here we go. I've got the picker wheel up. We've got 10 markets chosen. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna spin the wheel. We're gonna randomly pick a market, and then we're gonna go find us a deal. If you're ready, here we go. All right, Baltimore, Maryland is the winner. Let's go look for a property. All right, so I'm gonna use Redfin on this episode to find us a distressed property. So we can do this on Redfin or Zillow. One of the reasons why I love Redfin, if you watched any of the previous episodes, is because Redfin has a really cool feature called Fixer Upper, which will automatically just give us a list of distressed properties. Zillow doesn't have that feature, which is a bummer. Um, but I have a keyword list of, of all this, the stress keywords that you need to do it on Zillow. So if Redfin is not in your market, then you can do the same thing on Zillow. You know, go back and watch some of the previous episodes where I use Zillow to show how to do this uh, and get, be sure to get that keyword list. I'll give it to you for free. I'll put the link in the description for you, but you'll have to manually put in the keywords to find distressed properties on Zillow, whereas Redfin lets us do it. So let's go to Redfin right now. I'm going to go ahead and type in Baltimore and it's gonna it's gonna bring up a map of basically the entire market of Baltimore and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do I'm gonna go over here to more filters and I'm gonna do two things I'm gonna click on house because we want to look just at houses so then I'm gonna go down right here and I'm gonna click this fixer upper only tab and you can see here that it found me you know a handful of these homes that are falling under the fixer upper category so what Redfin does is they look for certain keywords in the descriptions that indicate that it's a distressed property. And so then I'm gonna click apply filter. And what I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna do something a little different here. Normally what I like to do is I like to go to the most recently listed homes under Fixer Upper and try to go after those ones. So right here under where it says on red fin, I can go for the most recent, which as of now, the most recent is eight days ago was this property on Re register but I'm gonna actually do the opposite this time. I'm gonna actually go to the oldest listed home. Now, why would I do that? The idea here is it's been sitting around forever. It's probably not getting any attention. It's probably overpriced. Everyone's probably ignoring it. It's probably kind of like tagged as this, you know, old property that no one cares about. I sometimes get some great deals going after the oldest properties that have been around. So that one would be this one here on Rogers Avenue, 3301 West Rogers Avenue. It's the oldest home under the fixer upper category. Let's go ahead and take a look at this property and let's go through some pictures and look at this baby. It is hammered. I mean, this thing is disgusting. It needs a complete rehab top to bottom. And there's probably a reason why it's been sitting around for 154 days. They're asking 195. Now, I don't know this market. We're gonna comp this thing right now, but let's look at the, descript the description here. It says huge six bedroom with garage on nice lot, beautiful tree line block, minutes to Pimlico, racetrack, hospital, perfect investment opportunity for savvy investor. Yeah, you think it needs a full, like, I'm gonna, this is a heavy, heavy rehab, probably a hundred thousand dollar rehab. And then it says to rehab and resell short sale professionally negotiated. Okay, this is a short sale. Now, let me just take a second and talk about a short sale. A short sale means that what the owner owes on the property is more than what the property will sell for. So think about that. If the property, if the seller owes, you know, 150,000 to the bank and it'll only sell for 120,000, there's not enough money to pay off the loan. He would have to write a check for 30,000. Well, that ain't going to happen. So you have a seller here who's probably behind on payments. That's typically what happens. He's missing his payments. And rather than wait until it forecloses and he has a foreclosure on his record, he's willing to work out and find a buyer and get the bank to 
basically short the difference of whatever he can get a contract for, whatever he can get a buyer for. That's a short sale. Now, the problem with short sales is they take forever depending on what stage of the process it's in. So what you have to do is first you have to get an accepted contract with a buyer. It's up for sale, so they need a contract with a buyer. They submit that to the bank. The bank would have to then approve that and agree to short the difference and they basically let the owner off the hook. So they don't come after them and you avoid a foreclosure. Seller makes no money, right? He's not walking out with any money, but he's getting out of the property and he's getting out of a foreclosure. So that's probably where this is at. So, you know, we'll ask when we call on this thing, but I'm, I'm gonna go out and guess it's probably, typically they take anywhere from 90 days to six months to get approved. So even if we get a contract on this house, it's we're probably not looking at closing on it for like six months. Okay, but this is a great one to go after because it's a short sale. So I'm kind of excited about this one. My gut is telling me right now that we're gonna be way under what they're asking, but let's go ahead and take a look. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna favorite this property. I'm gonna duplicate my tab. So we've got two, two identical tabs open. On the second tab, I'm gonna click right here where it says neighborhood. And what it does is it jumps me down to the bottom and it says that this is Baltimore and we're in this neighborhood called Pimlico. So if I click on Pimlico, it's gonna open up another map and it's gonna show me this is our little Pimlico neighborhood. It looks like there's this big green belt here, probably a park or something, but we just have these little streets right here and uh, there's our listing right there for 195. So there we are. We're gonna go over here now and comp this property. I'm gonna click more filters. I'm gonna click house. And then I'm gonna switch this from, sold, from active to solds and I'm gonna go back a year and it pulls up some comps. Now there's nothing immediately right here, just outside our boundary line, we've got some comps. But remember, we're like right here. So these homes right here are, are probably gonna be good comps for us to look at. Now let's put a couple more filters in. We're 2,078 feet. So let's go back over here and put a, put a range. So I'm gonna put maybe like I don't know, 1750 to 2250, let's see what that does. Let's go a little bit higher, let's go 25. So there's our range, 1750 to 2500 square feet, and it found these couple of comps right here. Now, one thing I noticed looking at this was that we have a garage. So it says on here down in the description, a garage, which uh, is a big deal because a lot of these homes are on small lots and don't have garages. So when I go back to my list of comps here, my filters, there's one here that says must have a garage. Now watch what happens if I click this. Okay, it got rid of pretty much all our comps. So that means most of the comps right now don't have garages and we do, so that's, a, that's gonna be a big bonus. So I'm not gonna put too many other filters in right here. I could put like bedrooms and bathrooms and I could put lot size and basement and all these different things, but we don't have that many comps that we're looking at here in the area. So I'm gonna leave the filters at just that. I'm gonna click apply filters. And then what I wanna pay attention to here is our comps over here. So our highest comp right now is just really close by to us for 300. Here's 245, here's a 294 and a 290. So our three highest comps are 300, 294 and 290. And let me go ahead and uh, remove my remove outline. Okay, that kind of gives me some others, but I wanna stay right in here. I don't wanna go too far out. And I'm gonna go click over here. The highest priced home is there's, okay, so way over here is one. But again, I wanna stick right around here. So this comp here, I'm really interested to look at. It's on Winter Avenue, it's a couple blocks away. Now right away, I know this is a flip, just looking at this first picture. I mean, look at it, it's staged, which means there's furniture put in it. Everything looks updated, everything looks brand new. So if I click on this, it's gonna open up this comp. There's 100 pictures and look at this thing. I mean, there's the outside, which is comparable to us, right? We look like this. Let me go back to our comp. That's us, you know, nice looking two-story, got a front porch. This comp, this has a screen or a built-in front porch. That front part is the porch. So they kind of like, you know, finished it. But let's look at this rehab. There's our porch. I mean, this thing is over the top nice. They probably opened up some walls, you know, to get that open floor pan, floor plan. And I always like to go to the kitchen. You know, nice kitchen, look at that. New cabinets, new appliances, the little island. This is a really nice rehab. 
did a backsplash, and they just kind of did the whole thing. So an old house like this is probably a $100,000 rehab. And I mean, we won't go through the whole thing, but you get the point. I mean, look at it. All new doors, all new trim, all new bathrooms, new tile everywhere. So really nice home. It's a little bigger. So it's 2,300 feet and it got 300, but no garage. So I love this comp. This is a really good comp. Now let's go back to our list. We got 300 there. Oh, let me try something here. A really cool thing I like to do is see what it sold for when the flipper bought the property. So if I scroll down here, I can go to the, to the price history. Right here's the price history. And check it out, guys. March 28th, they bought it for 95 and then listed it for 350 So they listed it pretty high. It took them a little while. And they ended up selling it for 300 So buy, buy 95 sell 300 And I'm going to guess you have every bit of a $100,000 rehab. So they're all into the thing for 200 sell it for 300 You know, probably made some money. Not a bad deal. But what I really want to focus on here is they bought it for 95 So what should we be paying for the same house, the same level of rehab? Probably around that price. Let's go look at another one here. Going back to our list of comps, I want to look at this one right here. This one's really close by for 294. Okay, two-story house, a little bigger, 2300, and it sold for 294. Let's take a look. I'm going to guess this is a rehab. And it is. Look at this. This is a rehab. This is professionally staged, brand new kitchen, totally rehabbed house. Open floor plan. See, they open the they put a wall and run a header. And they open these floor plans up because that's what people want now. Nice deck, brand new siding, new tile, new bathrooms, new carpet. This, again, is a $100,000 rehab to get a house like this. Okay, so there's our second rehab. We have two comps now at two ninety five dollars and three hundred. dollars What's ARV? I'll tell you right now. It's $300,000. That's our ARV. Really simple to comp this thing because we have two of them right close by that sold for right around three hundred. dollars Now, there's another one. I think I saw another one over here somewhere. I don't want to go too far away. Here's one for 288. Uh, there's a couple up here for, for even more, 347 and 320, but we crossed a couple kind of main roads to get over there, so I don't want to go over there. And there's one way over here for three. That's all, like an all brick one, so I don't want to use that. Um, so anyway, I think we're going to go with a, well, like a, like a 300 ARV and 100,000 rehab. Why 100,000? Because it's going to take every bit of that to totally do a full-blown rehab top to bottom. Okay, so, but, uh, oh, let's look at that other one, that 294, this one again. And what I want to do is I want to see if we can do the same thing. Not this one, where'd it go? This one. I want to do the same thing and see if we can see what the flipper bought this for. So we're going to scroll down to the price history. Now, it won't show the price history all the time. If they bought it off market, maybe not. But look at $70,000. So this flipper bought that house for 70, sold it for 295 basically. So, I don't even need to run a formula. I kind of need to I kind of know that I need to be around anywhere between 70 and 95 on our house. I think our ARV is actually going to push 300 because we have a garage, that's going to be a huge bonus. So I think for me, if I could get this thing for um, 90 I would have an awesome deal. I think I could get this thing for 90. I bet I could wholesale it for another 20 grand because it's got that garage, big lot, nice, nice house, good bones, like it's got the right, you know, beds and baths and size. So if I got this thing for 90, I bet I could either fix it up and flip it myself for probably 320, 3, 315. Um, if I wanted to wholesale it, I bet I could wholesale this to another flipper for 20, 25 more. Probably, probably 110, 115, somewhere around there. So I'm gonna go for 90,000. Now, if you think I'm nuts, leave a comment and say, Jerry, you're nuts, it's listed for 195. Why in the world would you make that offer? You're gonna see why, because we always make the offer. We, we're never intimidated by asking price, not with on market and not with short sale, especially. So let's now call up this agent and make an offer for 90. Uh, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna follow my double dip strategy where I call the listing agent directly unrepresented and see if he'll put, put the offer in for me. So right here it says listed by Bob Holmes with Century 21. Now it doesn't give me a phone number, so real quick I'm gonna Google this guy and then pick up the phone and call him. Hello? 
Yes, hello, is this Bob? Yes, Bob. Hi, Bob. I'm calling about one of your listings on Rogers Avenue. Okay. I'm a real estate investor interested in making a cash offer. I wanted to call in and talk to you about this one. Looks like okay. it's a short sale. It's a short sale, yep. It just became a short sale, yep. Okay. Yeah, I was looking at the price history and noticed it went down and then back up. <laughs> What's uh? It's, yeah, it's, it's been out for a while, 154 days. What's the story there? Yeah, he um he owes 165 on it. 165. Um, I had it listed. Okay. Yeah, we kind of jacked it down to 165 with the buyer paying all the closing costs and um the commissions on the property, uh, just so he could net the 165. So that's what he that's what he owes on it right now. Okay, so clearly it's not going to sell for that, right? Um, I don't know. You know, that's why we just, you know, we 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 we, we kind of went to a short sale. Um, so, um, but one but one sixty five would keep it out of short sale. One sixty five would 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 uh, maybe keep it out of short sale. I don't know how they would handle it. Okay, but so but that's not enough to do the payoff, closing fees, commissions, and all of that. One sixty five. Well, if the buyer, yeah, if the buyer pays the uh, all the closing costs and the commissions, yeah. Okay, but usually at one sixty, so so normally if I made an offer for one sixty five, the seller would pay the commissions. You're saying uh, yes, yeah. Now it's on a short sale. You might be able to, yeah. That that might be doable. Yeah. Okay, but yeah. At 165, I wouldn't be paying 6% commissions. The seller would pay that and the proceeds would be That's enough. Right. That's right. Okay. That's so 165 right. would be enough would be pretty close enough to get the deal done and avoid short sale. Is that what, is well, that what you're saying? Right now it's a short sale. Right. Right. You know, so if you wanted to submit an offer and just see, you know, you know how they they're going to work. I mean, they they want an offer for the property, then they'll they'll decide whether they want to take it or not, you know. Um, the short sale, we've got a professional short sale negotiating, negotiating with the bank um, to kind of uh, get this guy from un underneath the, the property. So that's so, been started, the short sale process? Yep, yep, yep. So they just need yep. an offer and then they can yep. submit that. And then what's the time yep. frame once an offer is submitted? Well, anywhere, you know, uh, you know short sale is going to take anywhere from 90 to 120 yeah. 20 days. You know, you know that, you know, it's like... Uh, mm, um, maybe they'll be able to get it done faster. I don't know. It's Wells Fargo. It's just one bank. Yeah. It's here in Maryland. So, um, well, how, knows? I mean, I'd like to make an offer, but it's going to be quite a bit lower. I'm not sure how familiar you are with that exact neighborhood, but, um, well, you know, I did some comps in there, you know, believe it or not, what's your name again? I'm sorry. Jerry. Jerry. Believe it or not, this friggin' property appraised back in June. I got an appraisal online. Um, if you click on the documents at the top, uh -huh. it appraised for two sixty five, June, June of last year. That's yeah, within the last six months. There's just no way. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I agree. I, I mean, agree. I'm looking at, I'm looking at, I'm right now. I'm looking at comps. I'm looking at five six zero five Winter Avenue. That sold for 300,000, it's 2,300 square feet. It is renovated to the nines. I mean, it is the most, yep. it is the most over the top rehab I've ever seen, you know? Yep. And it sold for 300. Yep. And, it, yep. and, it, and the flipper bought it for 90. Right. Like, let me pull it right. up real quick. I think it was 90. I got it, I got it right here. If I go down to the history on this thing right now, um, let me get down there to it, give me a second. It sold March 28th of 2019 for 95, okay? And sold July, so the flipper did a rehab, sold it, you know, less than a year later for 300, right? But, you know, that thing was hammered like this one. This one's hammered. It's a full-blown, like, top-to-bottom rehab. And yeah, then, yeah, and then I, if you, okay, and then that's that one, right? So then if I go over to, if I go over a couple streets over to, this one on Highgate, 5719 Highgate, it sold for 294. Also bigger. It's a 20, it's 2300 feet. That thing sold for 70 to the flipper, you know, like on the on the distress sale. And let me look that one up real quick. So that sold for 70 on I got it right here. August August 26, 2019 sold for 70 
and then June 19 sold for 293. So they bought it for 70, put you know 100 into it or whatever, and then sold it for 293. So those are both two comps like right in that same neighborhood that are in this kind of condition. And right. sold one for 70, one for 95. So, you know what I mean? Like, that's what, if that flipper were to buy your house or someone like me doing the same thing, it's going to have to be down there at that kind of number. So, I don't know how in the world that thing could have appraised for 260. I mean, I'm looking at the pictures of it. I've got the appraisal of it. I know, but yeah, like, I, what I were they? <laughs> like, how? <laughs> I agree. Um, like, look at this thing. I'm looking at the pictures. Sure. This thing is hammered. Yeah, but it, it, it needs a. Uh, Probably at least seventy, eighty thousand dollars worth of work. Hundred, all day. Well, depends on what kind of renovation you want to do. But it is big, and it's got a huge garage. Um, it's a, it's a big lot. Um, it's on a nice, really nice block there. Uh -huh. Now, I, I believe a property half the size of probably about five or six houses down there. I tried to go inside that I couldn't see it, but it auctioned. I think that I had a buyer who wanted to buy this one. He put a bid on that. Um, I think he said he got it for a hundred, but it was no, you know, it was a lot smaller. It was, the rooms were all cut up, no garage. So I don't know, Jerry, I mean, it's up to you. You want to submit an offer? Hey, you know, I submit offers, you know? Yeah. That's what I was hoping is, um, I just wanted to get you kind of on the same page with me where you're, I, I mean, not thinking I'm crazy, but I, no, I but I, I understand. Okay. But I think, I think, the the right number for this thing is going to be down there under a hundred. Like I'd i if I could get the thing for ninety, I'd be I think that'd be a deal. I've had tons of offers for ninety. Okay, um, well then I'm not crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but also I've got another one for one fifty. So um, I don't know. I mean, if you want to submit a bid, you know, for ninety a cash waving all off, waving all inspections, mm -hmm. or do your seven days right. Yeah, to yeah. Give me a couple sure. days just to walk it, but yeah. Yeah, let's yeah, do that. I let's mean, do. Let's. Do, and by the way, I'm I'm unrepresented, so I'd let you write the offer for me. Can you do that? Sure. You can represent both sides. Yep, I can represent both sides. Okay. Well, I represent, no, not really. I can't represent both. Sides. I represent the seller. I know, but can you okay. do dual agency on it? Uh, it's not a dual agent. You know, I can work with you as as a client. Transaction. As a, as a, buy, as a buyer. It's but can you get the three? My client is my seller. Right. You know? Can you get the three percent for the buyer side? Is what I'm offering. Uh, Three percent for the buyer. What do you mean? Um, well, I'm, since I don't have an agent, you would you would represent my side. That's right. That's right. So you'd get three percent for the buyer side. That's right. Okay. That's right. I because I don't care who yep. you, I don't care that you don't represent me. Represent the seller. That's fine. What I'm trying to do is strategically align with you, so you want to work with me, right? Not just this deal, but future deals. I'll let you write them and and be my, on, represent my side. You know what I mean? Sure. So, like, when yeah, you come yeah, across yeah, stuff sure. like I, this, I can write. I can write it for you. Yeah, it, 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 that, that's no problem. How would you put that then? Would you do uh, like just a transaction? Like, I'm trying to. I'm trying. So, I'm like, I'm a licensed real estate agent in Michigan, uh, okay. where I'm originally from. I guess, however you work it out, it doesn't matter to me. But, but I just want to let let you represent me and get that side of the commission. Or, I guess you could waive it. I don't know what you'd want to do, but. I'm not represented and would, and would want your help to write the offer and, you know, do the yeah, transaction. Yeah, I, I can write, I can write the offer. And, but again, you know, Jerry, I represent the seller. I That's fine. I represent you. That's fine. <laughs> uh, you know, again, I try to be fair and equitable to everybody. Um, I'm know, an investor, so I get the process, right? Like I don't need representation. Yeah, you know, you know, <laughs> right, right. You know, I've done a, do a dozen deals before where, you know, I represent the seller and um, we wrote a contract for the, for the buyer. Yeah. You know, I mean, but again, I represent, I represent the seller. If you want represent, if you want somebody to represent you as a buyer's agent, I recommend you call another agent. No, I don't care about that. <laughs> I want, what I you want know. is you to get the 3%. So you're, so when you find, so when you see deals like this, the first thing you think of is I got to call Jerry because Financially, yeah. it benefits me. <laughs> and, and Jerry, and you know, man, things are tough right now with buying property. I work I know. With all the time. It's tough, man, buying buying properties. I yeah. Mean, you get multiple offers. And no inventory. I got to write ten. I got to write twenty contracts to get one or two one or two accepted. 
you know, they're going with these damn escalation clauses and multiple oh, yeah. offers. They're waiving inspections. I just put one under contract. I mean, the buyer just, you know, they waived everything. You know? I got one. They went over I got one on the list. Yeah, I got one right now on the on the list side. So I bought it. I fixed it up, put it up for sale for it's a little little starter home for one one oh nine nine. I got like fifteen showings. I got a one fifteen offer, a one twenty offer, and these are like yeah. these are like twenty percent down conventional like appraisal guarantee. These are people that are like dying for a house. Yeah. It's, it's insane, you know. It sucks when you're yeah. buying, but it's amazing when you're selling. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, yeah. I'd rather be on this side than on the buyer side. I know. The investors around. I feel so you bad because I'm pitting these two buyers against each other, you know, and I've, like, I feel so bad because they just want to buy a house. Sure. Yeah. It's just the, the, the nature of the market. I know. I feel so sorry for the buyers, you know. Yeah. Um, but I'm like, hey, I had to, I had to tell the 115 buyer. Said, hey, you know, I got a 120 offer, and they're like, are you kidding me? You know, I'm like, sorry, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yeah, and investors, you know, like you, you, you're tough because you know, and I treat, I keep trying to tell my guys, look, you know, you, you can't undercut them no more. You can't go 15, 20 below no more. You know, you got to come up, and if it's a hundred thousand dollar house, you got to go up to 110, 115. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's just if you thing. want nah, it. Nah, I, ain't, I ain't going to man. If I if I am, if I can't get it for my price, and I ain't, I ain't getting the damn thing. Find me something else. I said, well, it's tough, man. We're, yeah, we're gonna be good doing this in the next two years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, so it is what it is. But yeah, if you wanna, um, you wanna think about it, Jared, let me know. No, let's I'll let's put it in. Email. Let's put it in for ninety. This is your cell phone. I called you on. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um. Do you have my number on there from the from the call? If you could text me your email, then yeah. what I'll do is I'll send you over like an offer sheet, and that's got you know name and price and inspection, everything you would need to write the offer. Yeah, yeah. And then and have you done short sales before? Yeah. Okay, so you know the process. You know, yeah, we'll I mean, wait around. Take them, hurry, hurry, wait. Take them a couple of months. You know, yep. to figure out. You know whether they're going to take it, and then they change their mind at the last minute and all that good stuff. But I know. It's all part of the negotiation. Yeah, it's it is what it is. But yeah, yeah, I'll send you my email. Um, I'll write the contract. I'll send you some of your email. I'll Perfect. send you the contract. The forty-five page contracts here in um, in in Maryland. You know, it is what it is. You just do do it. Oh, uh, you know what they. Uh, there's no e-signatures, I don't think. They, they want um, they want wet signatures. Oh, you're kidding. You can't do a DocuSign? Yeah, I'm going to have to check that out, man. Okay. Um, even HUD, even HUD is accepting um, uh, Did someone you know, tell, electronic, signature, electronic right. signature, signatures now. Someone you know? tell them it's 2021? You know, like, I don't even know if I have a pen on my desk. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I mean, come on. Like, give us a break. It's a fire <laughs> situation. You know, come on, you know. So yeah. Let me check. Let me check with the uh, okay. with the short sale negotiator and see if they, they can get in touch with the bank <clears throat> and see if we can do this DocuSign. You're in Michigan too, right? Did you say? No, I, I'm from Michigan. I'm actually in Arizona, but. Oh, you're in Arizona. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, you, you ain't hop skipping a jump from this property. Now, are you going to send somebody over to take a look at this property? Or yeah, if we get, do? yeah, I mean, do, do I even, do I even need to or do anything? No, no, I don't need to do that. I know, I know it's a, I know it's a gut from top to bottom. Do I even need to worry about it until six months from now when they approve it and then look at it? Cause it's going to sit. Uh, yeah, I mean, right. I mean, unless you want to do your inspections now. And, no, I'm going to need to look at it again and, anyway. I'll, let's just wait. I I know 90 is a number that I'll be happy with. So let's just go ahead and do it. Can you put something in there that I can I can like final final walkthrough, you know, upon a, upon bank approval? The last um, the last one I did, yeah. it took 6 months and they they called up and said, "Okay, we're ready." And I'm like, "6 months has gone by. Like I got to go look at it. I don't know what what's happened to that property in 6 months." You know, and then they, so if we could put something in there, like, um, all the inspections are, you know, based upon what, uh, third, the third party approval, get receiving. Approval. Right. There you go. So upon third party yeah. approval, five days or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. 
you know, and, and, I, and I tell you, you know, I've done a couple of these. I, I wouldn't even recommend that a bank accept that because, you know, I would get that friggin', I would, I would want that, 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 con- that as soon as the, the, written, the, the contract is written, it should be the date of contract, date of signed contract. What? You know, you get your inspectors out of the way because, God, they hold it up for six, and we take it off the market for six months, and then you do your, your inspection. Oh, and then say, I don't oh, like I don't, it. I don't want the <laughs> You know? I know, I but it's crazy the way they do these things. But, but the but they got but they got but they got to get their head around a ninety thousand dollar value on this thing, not two sixty. No, no, no. Right, right. No, I mean at least uh, you know I think I, I think it will sell for one sixty, one you know one fifty, one sixty, or something like that. Even one forty, you know, not I think, as is. I think would be, huh? As is. Yeah, I've had offers for 140. Well, why haven't they taken that? Well, because the seller, it wasn't a short sale. Um, oh, at the time, it sale. wasn't a short sale, right? Right, right, right. And the seller would have to bring 25 to the table, and he didn't have 25 yeah. to the table. Yeah, yeah, I see. You know, so, and I think that was the highest that I've gotten. It was one. It was 140. Were those retail buyers? No, they were investors. I just don't you know, see how. Retail, I mean, I'm looking at a retail buyer. Look at this product. <laughs> no, it won't pass retail. Hell no, no, no. The radiators, the uh, baseboards are are torn off the wall. It's not. Rotten. There's no way that would pass a mortgage inspection. Heck no. You know, somebody calls me up and they want to do retail. Oh no, man, I ain't do it. You know, but mm-hmm. <laughs> go get yourself another agent. It ain't gonna happen. You know. Um, I mean, I'm just looking yeah, at, I mean, I'm looking at flips in the area. I'm looking at what those investors bought them for, what it's going to, this thing's going to take every bit of a hundred grand. You know, it's a lot of work to do those things. That one. More than, more than likely, you know, I've heard 75, 80, I think 80 was the highest to, to rehab it. Not, po- uh, not post COVID, on- not po- everything's, it costs 20% more post COVID to, for, for labor and materials. Yeah. And it's a big house too. It's a big house. It's going to take. It's a big friggin' Everything's house, expensive. You know? Everything costs more now. You know, I don't know if it's inflation or what the deal is, but it's everything costs more. Yeah. I mean, two by fours yeah. are nine dollars instead of two dollars. Right, and it, it needs a, it, it needs a damn good clean out. The guy's got a lot of junk in there, man. A lot yep. of bags so and get, stuff. I don't know what the hell's in there. It's probably going to cost a couple grand just to clean the damn thing out. Yeah, you got dumpsters and, and a trash out. Yep. The garage is full, full of crap. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, man, oh, man, oh, man. <laughs> well, Bob, text me your email. I'll send you over an offer sheet with all the all the details for the offer. And then um, hopefully we can okay. docu-sign that. If not, then we'll figure it out. Okay. I all don't right. I don't even think I have a printer around here anywhere, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> yep. Okay. We'll see if we can do this docu-sign. Okay. I'll call the... I'll call the short sale negotiator see if we can do this, and um, I'll get you all the other information that I'll need: um, proof of funds, earnest money deposit. I'll yep. let you know what yeah. I need, and we'll, we'll let me know what you need on there. that. That I can I can provide you all that, so not a okay. problem. Good enough, Jerry. Perfect. Up. Thanks, Thanks Bob. Talk right, to you bye. soon. Bye. Okay. Awesome. That was really great. So the one thing that you know you want to pay attention to with short sales is it doesn't matter to the seller, right? Because He's just trying to get out of the property. He's trying to avoid a foreclosure. He's not walking out of there with any money. So whether it sells for 100, 120, 140, 90, 50, it doesn't matter because he's just trying to get out of the property without and avoid a foreclosure. Now, the issue here is we're going to go to the bank with our offer. Uh, The seller may accept 90. I think he will. I think they're going to take my 90 offer. I'm going to have an accepted contract, which means absolutely nothing because the bank has to prove it now. So the bank's gonna, the bank owes, let's say the guy owes 140 on his loan or 150, whatever he owes on his loan, the bank is gonna have to accept a $90,000 offer, short the difference, which means they're gonna let the seller off the hook. The bank's gonna eat that difference if they accept 90. But that process, there's so much bureaucracy, and like he said, it's anywhere from typically 90 days to six months to go through the whole short sale process, get the approval, and close. And that's why you notice there, I said on there, I need to have a contingency on my offer that I'm allowed to reinspect the property once there's bank approval. They call it third party approval. Once the bank approves my 90,000 and they say, hey, we're all set to go, we can close in two weeks, 
I'm gonna to wanna to go look at that property again because it might be six months from now. Who knows what that thing's gonna look like? What if, what if the roof is falling in or someone's vandalized it or pipes busted, whatever could happen. So I'm not even gonna go look at this thing right now. I'm gonna to try to lock up a $90,000 offer. Uh, and then once we get that bank approval, if and when we get that bank approval, then I'll go look at it, make sure I like my number, recomp everything and go from there. So, but pretty exciting guys. I mean, this thing is, what was our list price? 190? Forget. Where are we at here? Let's, uh, something up there. Come on, get back to the top. Oh no, that's our comp. Let's see, it's this one, this one. So this thing is listed for 195. We offered 90 and that agent's gonna write it and I think the seller's gonna take it. You know, I think they're gonna accept that offer. Uh, so this is why guys, we, and then he just texted me his um, email. This is why guys, we never discriminate offers based on asking price. This is a great example of that. The reason why no one's making offers right now is because it's way overpriced and everyone's just passing over it. They're like, oh, seller wants too much, not worth my time, not gonna make an offer. And here we are and we're gonna end up getting the contract. Maybe if the bank approves, we'll get the deal. Another reason why we do this. Okay, so guys, we did all of this with, uh, without any tools but I wanna really reiterate to you that the way to really do this business the right way, where you're more organized, you're more systematized, you're more automated, is to have some really good tools. And I built a tool that does that for you. It's called Flipster. It's an all-inclusive platform where you can organize, streamline, and automate all of the steps to flipping houses, from your contracts, to your analyzers, to your CRM, all of it, right? So you can stay super organized and really run your business at a high level. And I want you to check that out. Just go to getflipster.com and you can see it in action and see how it works. And guys, if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe to this channel. Uh, this is the number one channel on YouTube for all things wholesaling and flipping. If you found this video super helpful, leave a comment and let me know about that too. And uh, we're always picking new markets. We do this show every week. So if you'd like us to put your market on the list, leave a comment and let us know and we'll see if we can do your market as well. All right, we'll see you on the next video.